Hello, hello. Hi from Paris. Uh, I know last week I told you that I'd be back in Brooklyn by now, but um, in fact, I realized uh, a couple days before we left Stockholm that it was going to be my father's birthday on December 10th. And I also realized that you can basically cancel and change plane tickets at will nowadays. And so I said to myself, uh, it'd be kind of crazy not to go to Paris uh, for my dad's birthday. And so here I am in Paris, um, but returning to New York tomorrow. So just here for a few days. Hi, Losi Pfeiffer. Great to have you with us. Uh, hi, Jen. Hi, Carol. Uh, hi, Silvano. Silvano says, ouch. Not sure quite why. Uh, hi, Manuel and Frank and Michael Loftus, Daniela, George, Tommy, uh, Joyce, Julie, Julie. Hi, Jean-Paul, Jean-Paul. Um, yeah, great to, uh, great to have you all here today. Oh, Daniela says some sync issues. Yes, thanks for reminding me. I always forget to do this, but I'm going to fix that for you right now. Um, there we go. There you go. Now we're synced, right? Yes. Hi, Ron Ros Rosenthal. Um, <clears throat> hi, Conrad, Gail. Hi, Bill. I love that we're developing this, this community here. How cool. Hi, Igul, who's in Dubai. Wow. Incredible. All right, well, um, I think it's about time to just jump in and play some music. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to play a free improvisation. It's been, been a minute since I've done that solo. And so uh, I'm going to do that. Um, but before that, Frank Geyer says, FYI for your trip, Blizzard coming through on Wednesday. Okay, well, we're supposed to go back tomorrow, Tuesday. So... I guess we'll miss it, and then, uh, and then we'll have some snow, maybe. All right, I'm going to dive in, um, play some music.
Ah, just a little pre-improvisation for you on this 14th of December, 2020. Quite a uh, remarkable year. I bet none of us expected 2020 to play out like this at the beginning of the year. But I also um, appreciate how it's made us reevaluate <clears throat> a lot of what we took for granted before. Hi, Sachiko Jaquez says hi from Miami, Florida. Um, Carol McGoffin, hi, she says this was so full of curiosity. Nice. Yeah, I think there was some curiosity in there. I think you're right. Um, okay, well, let me tell you something. Earlier today, um, I took a voice lesson with... Um, one of the greatest singers in the world, for sure, uh, Cecile McLaurin Salvant. Uh, I, I think a number of you were at um, were at our, our live stream concert that we did together um, a few months ago. Cecile McLaurin Salvant, and uh, um, and I took a voice lesson from her because a number of you have been asking me to sing a specific song that I find kind of hard to sing. And um, I mean, everything is hard to sing for me, but this one I find particularly hard. And I, um, I don't think she fixed all my problems in one lesson, but, but it was helpful and it was great to hang with her again. Um, so I'm gonna sing the song, it's uh, Skylark. Skylark, which I've played a number of times on piano, but never sung for you. And um, I'm just gonna take stock of some of your comments before I do this. Um, yeah, Carol McGoffin points out the electrical, the electoral college is voting today. So a day to celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. Once it's done, I'll celebrate. Conrad Gale says, can you play some Bach? I will play some Bach. What a nice, what a nice, um, request. I'll do that after I sing, um, Skylark. And, uh, here we go. Have you anything to say to me? Won't you tell me where my love can be? Is there a meadow in the mist Where someone's waiting to be kissed? Skylark Have you seen a valley green with spring Where my heart can go a journey Over the shadows and the rain To a blossom covered lane in your lonely flight Haven't you heard the music in the night Wonderful music Faint as a will-the-wisp Crazy as a loon Sad as a gypsy serenading 
sky, Lord. I don't know if you can find these things, but my heart is riding on your So if you find them anywhere, won't you lead me there? Skylark, um, one of my mom's favorite songs, also uh, one of Lee Konitz's favorite songs. I, I played that with him a number of times. Uh, he had this really cool arrangement of it, actually. Um, it went chromatically. It was like... line just goes down chromatically. Jonathan Glass says, looks, looks like the lesson helped. I think it did a little bit. I mean, you know, it's, it's, there's no silver bullet for this stuff. I got to just practice singing, which I never do. Um, but, but yeah, you know, it was pretty great getting some advice from a true master like Cecile. Um, and I, um, she plays some pretty mean Bach on the piano. And so then I, I uh, gave her some tips for playing Bach. 
Um, Paul James Brown says, you have a genuine, engaging, soft, romantic vocal instrument with a nice high end. You have a future as a crooner for sure. <laughs> and I look forward, I look forward to what you can do with the great musicianship you possess. Thank you, Paul. I don't know if I'll ever get there. Um, Daniele Prolong asks, if I know Syracuse, sung by Yves Montand. I know the song. I, I wouldn't be able to sing it, uh, but I actually used to play that with Camille Berthaud who's a, a, a really wonderful French singer uh, that I recorded with and whom I used to play with a lot. Um, Carol McGoffin says, practice on us anytime. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I will do that. So, yeah, um, I forget who it was, but there was a request for some Bach, and I just mentioned Bach in connection with Cecile. So maybe I'll play some Bach. Um, let's see, what could I play for you? You know what? Maybe I'll try playing Variation 26 from the Goldberg Variations. It's absolutely insane. It's one of the hardest ones. And um, let's see if I can do it right now. Variation 26 from the Goldberg Variations, purposely really fast. Uh, and the reason for that is that I was recording uh, Variation 26 for my Bach Upside Down project because I'm up to Variation 25. Um, Bach Upside Down, I'm sure you all know, but for those of you who are just joining us today, it's a project where I play pieces by Bach and then have my computer play a chromatic inversion of them. And um, <clears throat> Um, I was re recording Variation 26, and obviously it being Bach, I want every note to be in its right place and, and really be perfect, you know, especially if I'm making a recording of it. But when I listened back, I realized that it was missing verve. It was missing that kind of um, forward momentum that really feels exciting. And so I've been trying to find a way of playing it that's just more more extravagant um, because remember that's the variation in the Goldberg variations that follows variation 25 that's the most incredibly somber variation and so it just needs to really explode um, so that's that's what I was trying to focus on just now um, George Thomas Wilson says whoa I've never seen you so intensely focused on your mechanics yeah well that that's of all the possible things that I could play that would make me focus on the mechanics. That would be one of the top ones. Um, what am I gonna play now? What am I going to play now? Um, do you guys have any requests? Conrad Gale asks, can I get a virtual lesson on piano and composition? Yeah, I, um, I enjoy giving lessons. Um, just drop me a line at, um, just on, on here is perfect. You can just write me a message um, on, my, on my page here and, um, and we can talk, that'd be fun. Um, Paul James Brown says, I used the recording of this variation for my 70th birthday concert for the closing of my TV show. It is such a great piece. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. Uh, Matt's Blankenau asked for variation seven. Variation 7 is, is such a lovely one. Let me play Variation 7.
Variation 7, followed by an improvisation on it. Um, let's see. Truly Archibald says, maybe a little more Joni Mitchell and River. That's holiday -y and a lovely tune. Um, I don't, I haven't learned River yet. I need to do that. Um, but um, I think, um, I think I might sing uh, another Joni Mitchell song, um, one that I've sung probably six weeks ago or, or maybe more than two months ago at this point. Uh, I want to sing, um, I want to sing um, Both Sides Now, Both Sides Now, yeah, by Joni Mitchell. got in the way I've looked at clouds from both sides now from up and down and still somehow it's cloud illusions I recall I really don't know clouds at all Tale comes real. 
I've looked at love that way But now But now That dizzy dancing way that you feel when every fairy tale comes real. I've looked at love that way, but now it's just another show, and you leave them laughing when you go. But if you care, don't let them know. Don't give yourself away. I've looked at love from both sides now, from give and take, and still somehow, it's love's illusions I recall. I really don't know. And something's gained in living every day. I've looked at life from both sides now, from win and lose, and still somehow it's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life. I really. was um, Both Sides Now by Donnie Mitchell, which I had learned for you um, for the first time and felt like playing. And actually, I'll tell you why. Uh, it's because it was my dad's birthday, as I mentioned, a couple days ago. And on the way to Paris from Stockholm, um, I was texting with some dear old family friends, um, Losi and William, and they asked me if I would sing something for my dad for them for his birthday and I asked them what I should sing and uh, Losi said some Joni Mitchell uh, because it's from their generation and it's something that they know and love so I sang that song for my dad a few a few days ago but with guitar I hadn't hadn't thought about playing it on piano for a while um, 
Yeah. What else am I going to play? Um, let's see. I think um, did someone request something by Bill Evans. I um, I've played Blue and Green, which is by Bill Evans, a number of times, and I actually do know some other songs of his, but they're always a little slippery, and uh, I'm not sure I can do I can do them justice right now. Mike Seitz says, both sides now seems fitting for me today. I just left the West Coast last Wednesday after having lived there for a few years. And now I'm temporarily holding in, in WV, West Virginia, until my new home is built near the Delaware Atlantic Coast. I've looked at America from both sides now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, good luck with that change. Um, moves are tough. And... Uh, I know it'll be great for you, but I know it's also really tough going through those kinds of upheavals. Um, Joyce Glasgow asks for an improvisation. Um, so, yeah. Oh, Silvana Raffo asked for, for an improvisation on a Love Supreme. Uh, yeah, I've seen him ask that for a few, a few times. Yeah, I'll play, um, I'll play something on A Love Supreme, which is really just um, a four note theme by John Coltrane from his album, A Love Supreme, which is one of his masterpieces. Um, and the, the, the theme goes, A love supreme, a love supreme, a love supreme, a love supreme. And um, yeah, I'll try, to, I'll try to play free improvisation on that theme. Here we go.
That was fun. That was fun. Thanks for that suggestion, uh, Silvano. Silvano has been drawing these live streams for those of you who haven't checked it out. It's pretty cool. He does these free improvised um, drawings of, of <clears throat> every piece I've been playing, every improvisation I've been doing uh, for months now. And uh, it's quite a collection and they're all very individual. Um, Joyce Glasgow says, an octopus's tendrilled arms floating, undulating in ocean currents like an underwater ballet dancer, graceful and mesmerizing, hypnotic. Love that imagery, Joyce. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Mats Blankenau asks, what do you think about Wendy Carlos's Switched on Bach? It's funny you should ask because I actually have been listening to that. I've been listening to that record um, the last couple weeks. And um, I think it's brilliant. I think, you know, it's really important to remember that at the time, no one had heard those sounds before. Uh, Switched on Bach is this multiple, multi-million copy selling record um, made by this uh, composer, Wendy Carlos, um, on one of the first Moog synthesizers. And um, she plays pieces, uh, compositions by Bach, you know, famous things like, like air on the G string, for example, but using only these synthetic sounds. And um, she does it with a lot of taste and uh, it really sounds great. I think it's, it's, uh, it's beautiful. There's a reason that record sold so well. I read um, actually that the, so that's a Columbia record and they had this concept, which is that they wanted to make a Bach record, you know, using different sounds or something, and, and, and they didn't know who to ask, and somebody recommended Wendy Carlos. And because Wendy Carlos was unknown at the time, they offered her a really uh, small advance, I guess a almost non-existent advance. But in return, uh, she got a, a higher share of the royalties uh, than she would have otherwise, than she would have if she'd gotten a big advance. And that record happened to do incredibly well, sold millions and millions of copies, and so she made a lot of money. So that's a nice story. Sometimes it works out that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, Daniele Prolong points out that Wendy Carlos's film scores are awesome as well. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, film score to uh, The Shining is incredible. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, Jen Detour reminds us to watch My Octopus Professor, which I have not watched yet, but apparently we all have to, we all have to watch it. Mike Seitz says, Carlos was a genius, but actually Carlos is a genius because she's still alive, uh, as far as I know, and uh, alive and kicking. Apparently she sues anyone who tries to put out her music, um, you know, make it available in any kind of electronic form or anything like that. The only way you can get her music is, um, is by buying a CD. It's not available on any of the streaming services. You can't get a download from her website or anything. Um, okay. What am I going to play now? Um, I think I want to play, um, something kind of, um, kind of up, kind of rhythmic. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do all the things you are a bit fast. Uh, I think that could be fun. Here we go. All the things you are by Jerome Kern, but, uh, kind of up tempo. Oh, maybe do you guys have a time signature that you want me to do it in? Why don't you give me a time signature and a key for, for, uh, for all the things you are. Daniele Prolong says, we'd love to hear again the piece you called Seconds that you composed for your trio session with Jorge Roder and Eric Harlan. Okay, well, while I'm waiting for time signature and key from you, um, I'm gonna go get my iPad, because it's right over there, and then I'll play Seconds for you, because uh, yeah, I like that composition. Um, I'll be right back. Thank you. 
back. I'm back with uh, my iPad. Um, well, what do you think? Should I play seconds first then? Um, maybe I should, since it's a request. I'll do, I'll do this thing I wrote. This is a, a, a song I wrote for, um, for Jorge Roeder and Eric Harlan, and we played it trio. And uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's um, my challenge in writing this to myself, because I like to uh, give myself specific challenges. My challenge was to um, only use seconds. So the interval of the second, which is, can be a major second or a minor second. And that's all there is in this song. And that's why it's called Seconds. Okay, I'm gonna play that for you. Thanks for that request.
Yeah, thanks for that request, Daniele. Um, yeah, that was a fun one. And Joyce Glasgow requests late night geometry, which is actually named uh, by Silvana Raffo. Another one of the another one of the songs that I wrote for that trio with with uh, with Eric Harlan and Jorge Roder. Um, let me let me try that one. Late night geometry. Here we go.
Yeah, thanks for asking for that. I, I'm enjoying playing these parts again, uh, playing these, these, these compositions again. Um, yeah, well, it's getting up there. I've been playing for a little over an hour. All oh, those rushes by with you guys. Um, I was really surprised at how fast time goes by. Um, I think I want to do what I mentioned earlier, which is uh, play all the things you are. Um, Joyce Glasgow says, the melody of late night geometry is so pretty in both a soft and demonstrative way. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to play all the things you are kind of up tempo. And I think there was a request um, earlier for, for 11 as a time signature. So I'll play all the things you are in 11.
That was fun. I hope it was fun for you too. It's a bit of an exercise. I was playing all the things you are and modulating, uh, transposing the song up by a fourth every time uh, the harmonic form came around and I was playing an 11, 11 four. Like that. Um, all right, well, um, it has been a pleasure connecting with you today. Thank you all for coming out. And um, next week, I think I can say for sure that I'll be back in Brooklyn. And um, I look forward to getting the disco of out again and, and uh, experimenting with the algorithms and all that. And also doing some more remote collaborations. It looks like I might be doing a duo concert with the great guitarist Gilad Hexelman, uh, one of my favorite players. He just came back. Uh, we returned to New York from Israel. Um, so once I go back home, then we'll be in the same area and we can do a Jack Trip collaboration. Henry um, Ladevig says, don't stop. <laughs> Thanks, Henry. Um, actually, if you guys want me to play one more, I'll play one more. But you got to give me a good request. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you next week. Um, hmm. Carol McGoffin says, fun, the guitar duo. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that yet, have I? I actually hadn't, hadn't occurred to me until just now, but I haven't done one of these Jack Trip collaborations with, um, with a guitarist yet. So that's, that's kind of an oversight. We need to rectify that for sure. Uh, Jen Detour says, Hanukkah Improv. Frank Schumann says, one more. <laughs> uh, Joyce Glasgow says, sun music for the eclipse. And um, Jen Detour says, Christmas Improv. Carol of the Bells Improv. Hmm. Um, Oh, wow. Frank Schumann requests the Peacocks. Have I ever sung the Peacocks for you guys? I wonder if I have. I don't think I ever have sung the Peacocks for you guys. I, I don't know if I want to do more singing today, though. And Igul Abrahmanova says some basa, which I think is a really good idea. Yeah. Um, and Molly Shen says chestnuts, like chestnuts roasting on, on the open fire. Maybe I could do chestnuts roasting on an open fire as a bossa nova. I think that's, would be pretty out there and, uh, that'd be fun. Oh wait, Joyce Glasgow says sing peacocks and there's a like on that. <laughs> a lot of requests coming in right now. Um, Okay, let me try to sing the peacocks. Here we go. The window looked out upon a pattern never ending of flowers and trees and little pathways far descending to the gardens far below us, the pavilion in the moonlight, where the peacocks proudly grace the scene. The vision, a quiet place, another way of living. You moved in so close, I really thought that you were given. I allowed myself a moment to believe that you could lead me to we 
reflect upon what might have been. The summer skies I saw reflected in the colors of your eyes. Yet somehow I could never peel away the layers of the skies. I'm drowning now. I'm slowly sinking in a sea of blue and green, where what you are is never seen. How can anybody love? I still hear the calling of the church bells in the morning. The peacocks still calling out their sad and bitter warning. Beauty's only an Here your truth is an intrusion A mirage is all it's ever been summer skies I saw reflected in the colors of her eyes yet somehow I could never peel away the layers of the skies I'm drowning now I'm slowly sinking in a sea of blue and what you are is never seen. How could anybody know you? I still hear the ringing of the church bells in the morning. The peacock still calling out their sad and bitter warning. Booty's only an illusion. Here your truth is an intrusion. A mirage is all it's ever been. A mirage is all it's ever been. Yeah.
the peacocks. The peacocks. Thanks for that request. Um, that is a fabulous song. And um, yeah, the lyrics I just sung, I just sang, are from uh, are by Norma Winston, uh, who is a great, great, great singer, British singer, but also an incredible lyricist. I think writing any kind of lyrics to that song is quite a feat. And writing lyrics that are that good, that have that level of depth and storytelling is, is really something pretty extraordinary. So um, yeah, um, bravo to uh, Norma Winston. Um, yeah, okay, one more for you guys. Um, I'm gonna play the Christmas song as a bossa nova. Um, Frank Schumann says, Jimmy Rolls was totally into lyrics, wasn't he? Did he write these lyrics also? Um, I think someone else wrote lyrics to the Peacocks. And, and from what I understand, Jimmy Rolls actually didn't like them so much. And uh, when Norma Winston wrote these lyrics, uh, he liked them a lot. I mean, they're really amazing. So, um, yeah. Okay, I'm doing the Christmas song. Here we go.
All right, so um, <laughs> that was an attempt at the Christmas song. I'm pretty sure I was playing the bridge in the wrong key. Um, and I'll um, try to look at that, try to play it properly for you next time. And um, yeah, thanks again for checking in today, you guys. Um, this was a lot of fun. And I'll see you next week. And I'll have a little more news for you regarding uh, this duo, the next ticketed live stream. Um, all right. Stay healthy, you all. Um, Joyce Glasgow says, thank you for this lovely afternoon. Safe travels. Maybe you'll write some new songs on the way back. Yeah, maybe I will. I, uh, I've been enjoying trying to write some new stuff in the plane. I'll try to do some more of that. All right. Take care, y'all.